considering this to be a population, blink, blink, blink. Okay, it'll have that type of information. You just have to read it, know what you're doing. Are you with me on this? Okay, you're also going to notice that's the only formula I'm going to give you for population because this one does not have a corollary. It doesn't, it doesn't go along with anything. Uh, so this and that are your main standard deviations. Okay, that one's for sample, this one's for population. This is like a special case for a sample. You don't have that over here. Okay, so there's no like cheater case, there's no easy way to do that way. Karina. So the final answer for um, this segment would be 1973. Yeah. Three is not the standard, no, this is not the standard deviation for three. That's not the standard deviation. You have to take the square root. Because we're going to talk about what this number is inside in just a second. Okay, so you can't you can't just leave it as three. It's not three. You take the square root of three. That's what you get. You okay with that? And like in our test, you're going to tell us whether it's a sample or a population. Test. Of course, yeah. And then that will confuse which one. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So I'll, I'll tell you what, what it's going to be. You have to use the appropriate one, right? If I say population, you better be using that. If I say sample, you have those two to choose from. It's a good question. Great question so far. Any other questions that you guys have? Right now, this is probably brand new to you, right? You've probably never seen standard deviation before. What is this? If you're still having a couple questions, now is the time. All right. Well, there is one more thing we need to talk about today. And that's a word called variance. It's another way to me measure variation, but we don't actually use it as much as standard deviation. This is like our bread and butter. We use this all the time. So you're going to have to be pretty good at finding that. Just like we had sample standard deviation and we had uh, population standard deviation, we're also going to have sample variance and population variance. the nice thing about variance. You ready for it? Variance is based directly on your standard deviation. Or if you want to think about it this way, standard deviation is inherently based on your variance. Here's why. You want to see it? You ready? This is kind of cool. You guys don't want to learn another formula, do you? Do you? Do you? Some of you are like, yeah, bring it on, whatever. But no, you probably don't. Um, here's the deal. You've already, if you've calculated standard deviation, you've automatically calculated the variance. Some of you are, are, aren't listening out there. If you've already calculated the standard deviation, you've automatically already calculated the variance. Here's the variance. Watch on the board. The variance is the number that you have before you take the square root. Okay, That's all it is. So if you look at this, what's the variance for this example? What's the variance for this example here? It's 49. That's it. Just before you take the square root. What's the variance in this example? Do you see why I can't have you put standard deviation as 3 now? That's our variance. It's our standard deviation. The, vari the standard deviation is the square root of 3. The variance is 3. Are you with me on this? So it's very easy to find the variance if you have the standard deviation. Uh, you just don't take the square root. you got the variance. That's pretty much it. Our symbols look like this. For sample variance, because if you think about it, think about this. If that's our variance and that's our standard deviation, the variance is just the square of standard deviation. So our variance is S squared. Our population variance is sigma squared. So for our example right here, for our example right here, our sample variance is, how much was that again? 
How much is our our sample variance? The square root of three would give you 1.73, right? That's your standard deviation. Your variance is the number without the square root. How much is our variance? Three. Three. That's your variance in this case. Our sample variance is just three. How many people are okay with that? Raise your hand if you follow that rule. Okay. It's not still the square root of three, because that, that again, that's going to give you your, your standard deviation back. And that's how we're getting 1.73. Our variance is three. Let's practice this one more time for this case over here. What's our variance here? Is it 7, the square root of 49, or 49 itself? What is it? 49. It's 49. Okay. The square root of 49 is 7. Okay. Also, one more thing about math that you, you already know. I just want to make sure that, that you get this. So here we have 49. Not the square root of 49. It gives you 7 again. When you take a square root, you should stop taking the square root after that. right? So if you take the square root of 49, you don't end up with the square root of 7. Look at the board right now. Do you know that the square root of 49 is 7? It's not the square root of 7. You don't just keep on going and keep on going. Once you take a square root, you're done with that square root and you stop writing it. You with me on that? Yeah. Okay, so we found the standard deviation a couple times. We found the variance a couple times. Do you feel okay about this? Would you like to see how to do it on your calculator again? Yeah. Okay. Of course you would. That's the fun part. Would you like to put down the screen and turn this thing on? It makes that Star Trek-y sound. See? So if you have a calculator, follow along, let's do this thing. The first thing that we need to do, go where? Where do we go again? Yeah, yeah what class are we in? So from your screen, again, you're going to go to stats because, hey, we're in stats. It brings you to the edit button. Again, that's your list. So if you click on that, it's going to bring you to this first list. Now, if you've got some numbers in here, here's how to clear those numbers. Watch carefully. You can't press one button or well, you'll, you'll delete the whole list. You can go item by item and press clear, or go up and highlight the L1, press clear, and then press enter. Don't press delete. That'll delete your whole list. You don't want to do that. I mean, it will remove the L1 from your screen. You don't want to remove your L1 from your screen, okay? So press clear, not delete. Are you with me on this? And some, on some of your calculators, it will do that. So now we're going to go through and enter the rest of our data. So let's go ahead and we'll enter uh, the 477, just to make it easy. So we'll do 4, down or enter, 7, 7. Make sure it's in there. You should say we have, right now it says four data items at the bottom because we have that highlighted, but we have nothing in there. So it's really only three. So because if you go back up there, it says we have three items. 
And that's your, well, it says uh, the item that you're, you're highlighting. Um, so we'll go back to our stat. Go over to calc. That means your, your calculations that it can do for you. You're going to highlight one variable statistics again. That's the only thing we've done so far. Highlight that. Do you remember how to find your L1 on your calculator? You can do second. Find your L1. In this case, it's the one button right there. It says L1 right on top. That will put it on the screen for you. You press enter, and it gives you all this nice information. Again, that sum of x, or sorry, the, uh, the x bar, that is your what? The sum of x, look at that. Isn't that something we just used in our calculation? So you could find it here if you really wanted to. Sum of x squared, we also used that one. Now, the next two, that's what we're really looking at, though. The next two are your standard deviations, so it's the plural. Your calculator doesn't know whether you're dealing with a population or a sample. You don't put in there anywhere, this is population data, or this is sample data. You have to know that. But it will give you both calculations right away. The only difference is whether you divide by n minus 1 or you divide by n. Notice how the population version is smaller. You see that? Because this one's going to slightly overestimate it because it's a sample. That's just what it does. Was it, this was exactly what we had, wasn't it? Awesome. So depending on what you need here, which one is our sample again? The top one or the bottom one? Oh. Is our S, that's sample standard deviation. This one's population standard deviation. And we found the, the median down below also. Below these things. Do you feel okay about using your calculator? Yeah. Can you repeat that one again? I got lost. Go review this back on, online or come and see me. I'll help you with that in the class, okay? Great question. Any other questions? Yes? It doesn't tell you the variance. You just have to square that. Yeah, that's exactly right. That's a great point. That was my next point. You're like one step ahead. Just, just one, though. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Korean, yeah. Uh, what are standard deviations in real-life situation? Real-life situation, we're going to use this in, in conjunction with hypothesis testing to test uh, questions about, about data, whether or not we have enough information to go forward and state that we're putting too little soda in our cans, we need to up our soda amount because based on a random sample, we found out that all of our cans were too low or too high. And so what we're going to be doing is calculating a standard deviation, using that in conjunction with our mean, something called a z-score, something called a normal distribution, and figuring out hypothesis testing. So we have a long way to go. This is just one little, little piece. It's a big piece, but it's a little piece. Does that make sense? It's, it's an important piece, as you just saying. Are you with me so far, folks? Okay. Um, so we'll be using that standard deviation. Next time, what we're going to be doing, we'll talk a little bit about some, some properties of standard deviation a little bit more. Uh, I'll give you what's called the empirical rule, which is kind of a nice rule to use, the rule of thumb. Uh, it's not exact, but it's very, very close. Um, the one thing I did want to mention was her question there. When you do have, when you have, just use your calculator, don't pack up yet, it's really noisy and kind of noisy. Um, When you do have just your calculator and you've just done your standard deviation, if I ask you for the variance, yeah, you're not going to be able to give me just 1.73, that's your standard deviation. In order to find your variance, you just square one the number, depending on what you're doing, okay? Because the, the variance is the population standard deviation or the sample standard deviation squared. So you take this item, you square it, Try not to round it at all, otherwise it'll be off just a little bit, and it'll give you your variance. That was my question. Is Whether you should round it or not? It, yeah. You can, but it's going to be off. You know, I mean, if you round uh, 1.73, you're not going to get the 3. If you round all of this, you might not get the 3. This number is supposed to go forever. Yeah, so it'll, be, it'll be very, very close. So that's a good question also. Any other questions, Mr. Chairman? Did today make sense for you? Good. All right. Now, what I've done is I've put the 3.3 uh, the homework on the website. If you want to go there and get it, you may. Um, I will write it on the board from now on. I just want to make sure you knew where the website was one time. So now that you know where it's at, I will be posting that homework ahead of time um, if you want to get a start on it. So this is not going to be due on Wednesday, but you can get a jump on it. We have a couple more things to do. Everyone clear? Yes. Have a great couple days. I'll see you on Wednesday.